Calling the meeting to order. Board of Public Works. Uh, February 22nd, 2012. Uh, first are the minutes of our past meeting, February 8th, uh, for approval. I have to make a noise about somebody recording the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. And I believe, well, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Can't we just make it a standing thing that unless I'm not here, <laughs> all, right, Mimi, uh, all future meetings will be? North Street <laughs> Citizens. I'm recording it on behalf of the North Street Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're uh, the minutes of the February 8th meeting. Approval. Second. Any thoughts, comments, corrections? Pretty thorough. No, I'm sure the meeting adjournment yeah. time is correct. All right, well, all in favor of accepting <laughs> the minutes, submit it. Aye. Great. Next, contract for zinc Thank orthophosphate you. to Keras Corporation in the amount of $30,200. This is our annual contract for zinc orthophosphate, which we use in the water system to help with corrosion control. Um, we had uh, we had three bidders this year that ranged in price from seven dollars and fifty five cents a gallon to eight dollars and fifty five cents a gallon. Um, last year's price was six dollars and thirty seven cents a gallon, um, and this year is, is seven dollars and fifty five cents a gallon. So price has gone up some, um, but this is something we need. Yeah, yeah well, uh, I've got uh, two sets of minutes here. Which one are you right? The 30,000, oh no, that's right. Two agendas. Two, yeah, two agendas. It's 30,208. Well, that's what it shows there. One for each other. Okay. All right. Okay. I had okay. one with me. And um, <clears throat> just as long as we're talking about the zinc orthophosphate, so it's fairly settled that we're going to continue using the building on Route 9? Yeah, I think for, at least for another year. Um, while we wait, we're going to continue to take uh, more water quality data from uh, from the reservoirs. The state is still fussing with what they uh, what they want to come up with for a manganese um, limit in the drinking water. So there's, a, there's some things that are in flux. So I think it makes the most sense at this point to continue to do this for about another year. And, um, Which is still still sort of looking for a way to incorporate bring that up. We are. To the treatment plan, yeah. We are, but with these regulatory standards and being evaluated by the state, that has that has some impact on our ability to, do that, to, to move this chemical up there. Okay. So, all in favor of approving the contract for the zinc? Aye. 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 Uh, change order number three to contract <coughs> 35111 for the Con Street reconstruction, the Gomes construction, in the amount of $22,000. This is a contract with Gomes to put in a fancy uh, LED rectangular rapid flash beacon um, at the Selva House uh, crossing on Con Street. Apparently, uh, it was the intention originally to have this as part of the original contract, and it wasn't clear if Chapter 90 monies would, would help cover the cost of this particular sign. Um, it's since been resolved that uh, Chapter 90 uh, funding will cover the, uh, the installation of this. And I've got a um, I've got a picture here of what it would look something like this. There's a, a, a solar solar powered panel at the top. There's a, a flashing light here. There's a, an arrow there, and this is a school sign, but the one that would have would be a pet crossing. Um, so you get, kind of get the idea there'd be one of these on each side of the street. Would they be? Would the signage be double sided so that you you actually have four signs? So there's I believe as you would approach, do you yeah. see both sides with arrows on both? I think so. Yeah. yeah. But is that similar to the product that's on State Street? It is. Is it the same, same company? It's, I'm not sure if it is the same company, though, Gary. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Are you satisfied with the one on State Street? Me? Yeah, I mean, I haven't paid much attention to it. Well, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I, last time I tried it, it didn't work, but I don't I don't know why. Maybe I didn't push the button right. I don't know. I didn't really think. I don't cross there very often, and I do see people cross there, and I've only seen it flash a few times. People don't push the button. It's yeah, true. a lot of people cross and they don't push the button. Yeah. yeah. That, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the product. Go over to the bakery there, yeah, I don't push. Yeah. I think it, I 
nothing wrong with it. Like, I think what's really important is that the signage is there, and the if somebody you know wants to use the beacon. I think it, it helps. It's not going to hurt. So this is Chapter 90, Money. And the, the Housing Authority, I think, is also contributing to the purchase of this because they were keenly interested in making that crossing safer. I think $2,000 of the, of the cost was, was coming from them. And is this competing with any other uses for that money? Well, I'm not sure it is. It's Chapter 90, Money. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we have a... We get a certain amount every year. That's it. I guess I don't have a, I mean... I, I think I would, I could say as a member of the Transportation and Parking Commission, it would be supported. And this was no, a, I mean, this truly, was it, 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 it makes a difference. I mean, it's, the, it's the signage on both sides, and if you can introduce flashing lights, it makes a difference. Especially since we recently repaved Pond Street. Exactly. It's, it's sort of a lot more smooth. Not faster. You can go faster. Go down. Get corrupt up anyway. Hit something. All set? Yes. So, all in favor of approving the contract? Aye. Aye. Uh, contract to Kleinfelder SEA uh, for the industrial park, industrial park sewer interceptor design. <coughs> in the amount of $56,000. This is a contract with uh, Kleinfelder SCA for uh, the design of a replacement sewer main. And I brought, you can just, I brought two copies of this. This sort of shows the locus of the work that we're talking about. But, uh, basically, from the industrial park roundabout uh, down, down to the uh, down to the Bradford Street pump station, we have an existing sewer line that is uh, at capacity. It's a 12-inch diameter sewer line. Um, so this this uh, proposal is for the design of an upgrade line, which would likely be installed parallel to the old one. Um, and SEA was uh, proposing an 18-inch diameter line there based on some preliminary calculations that they did. Is that the red line? The, it's the red line that would be replaced. Yeah. And is the blue line uh, okay with given the new pump station? It is. The other, um, this figure came from a hydraulic study that SCA did a, a year and a half or a couple of years back for us that evaluated all the sewer capacities for us in the vicinity when we were doing the, the Bradford Street pump station design project. Um, so the, all the lines downstream of the pump station are suitably sized. It's this line that goes into the pump station that's, that's at capacity. If we had another, if we had another uh, company that wanted to come into the industrial park and discharge, if they if they used some amount of, of uh, if they were looking for a certain amount of sewer capacity, would would really be not equipped to, to take any more sewer uh, sewerage there because we're during peak times we're we're pretty much at the capacity of that line. So this is the design. Oh. If this is the design work, do we have a plan to do the actual construction? Uh, we don't. I think uh, the idea would be to get the design done and then um, you know, have a discussion with the board about, about building it. Um, personally, I think that line, we need to have that line upgraded because if anybody wants to move in, into the industrial park or there's another um, sewer need out there, we're not going to be able to meet it. And, that, and that's. You know, that, that's a problem. So um, at least by having the design work done, then if there's a, a user that needs it, we'd have at least the design work that can cost estimates and will be well staged for some funding for that line? Well, I think it's uh, it might be a decision for the board to make in terms of, you know, do you want to do you want to upgrade that line now and have the capacity available if someone moves into town? If a business wants to move into town, I'm not sure that we want to tell them it's going to take six, eight, ten months to, to build a new sewer line before they can, uh, before they can discharge. So um, I think it's really a policy decision about the, about the project. It's, it's 2,000 feet of main. Um, we've got a preliminary construction cost estimate here of about 800 grand. So it's a big, uh, you know, it's a big, big project. Um, Jim? Yeah, that, that particular line right now is at capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if 
if you remember back to the report uh, of the, uh, the, the reason for the pumping station here, that uh, if power goes out, this thing will flood in 12 minutes. So there's no capacity there. But but the new pumping station was well, adequate generation, so yeah, there should be no outage. But that that short time tells you mm -hmm. the amount of capacity that's in there, and there isn't any. Right. And what what I was just wanting to clarify: one with that, one is the pumping. What's the timeline on the pumping station? It's up and running. Oh, okay. And on the right. okay. And, and and I was in there the other day, and they did a great job. So six to eight months. Well, design will take X amount of time and then six to eight months for, well, first we have to find the money and then we build. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably, you know, by the time you, you go out to public bid, you get the bids and sign the contract and do shop drawings and get the whole thing going, I mean, six months would be definitely the, probably the quickest thing to be able to be done. But I don't remember, I, I read the contract, but I don't remember timeline for, for, um, for no, for the design, time for oh. the design. Well, oh, there was a schedule on the yeah, back, but I couldn't read it. Uh, <laughs> but it was blank. That's why I couldn't read it. Well, it's not your eyes. <laughs> well, it was, maybe, it was, maybe it was color that didn't see they were, they were predicting uh, uh, about three and a half months to do the design. Okay. okay. So we could have capacity in a, within a year if we found money for the building once the design occurred. Right. They do have total hours. Now, we're also in the middle of a big wastewater study, which in the end will give us a roadmap, or we hope it'll be something like a road, something like the pavement management program. It won't be that simple, but, um, but you're guessing or you're predicting that this line will be near the top of that list? Yeah, I mean, look at, you know, if a company wants to come in, and set up shop in the industrial park, and they have some moderate amount of water use. I don't think we want to be in a position where we tell them we can't issue them a, a discharge permit. Yeah. It's a bad place to be when yeah. you're a sewer utility. I agree. But it's also a, you know, it's also a, a really large project. What is the possibility of finding money for this? Because it's capital improvements, and there is no capital improvement. Not for sewer lines. No, but it's sewer a enterprise fund. Yeah, sewer oh, enterprise fund. Oh, okay. Sewer enterprise fund. Um, okay, so that the big. Well, it's still a big chunk of money. It's a big chunk of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think the uh, the other part of it is once this study is done, uh, we'll be eligible to borrow two percent money from the state. Okay. And also, if another if a company, a real company, comes in and wants to create jobs, mm -hmm. it would be good leverage to get some state grant money. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, well, I don't think we don't want to do it. I mean... The board may recall that we had talked about this maybe a year ago. Um, we had a previous proposal from Kleinfelder that was a lot more money. I've since negotiated with them on the approach and we've come up with, with a way to cut down the design fee quite a bit, which is one of the reasons why we're trying to advance it. We had we initially thought we were going to uh, have time within our own engineering division to do the design, but we just we simply don't have the time to do it. And I think because of the critical need, we felt like it was important to at least get the design plans done and on the shelf, and we could figure out where to go with it. Um, Coca-Cola was originally looking for a discharge for a greater quantity, a greater volume uh, of discharge than we, than we permitted for them. Um, and they, they ultimately agreed to the limit. It was the capacity of the pipe was all we could offer, and they agreed to work within that limit. Um, but but this, this came up during the construction of the pump station and um, at the same time Coke was adding their additional product line. Um, Terry Anderson at the time had contacted the state to see if there, there was a chance to get any more economic development grant money um, for the sewer line and, and was basically told no that you know we had received a sizable grant to build the pump station and that there would be no more money for anything associated with the uh, you know the jobs and the economic development of associated with the Coke project. Is, is the 2% money a sure thing, borrowing it from the state? Once, once we have that study done, we'll be eligible for it. Yep. And, but we and, have to compete. And, so yeah, but that's, uh, you know, once you've 
jump, jump through all the hoops. It's much easier to get the money out than it is, uh, you know, trying to mm -hmm. beg, borrow, and steal it. Mm -hmm. And and we've let this contract for close to a million dollars to for the sewer study. And uh, once once we get that in, I think we we got something. The, the board's all set. Mimi has a question. Or oh, I have a question, Jim. The the cost that you cited strikes me as high. It's like. $400 a linear foot, and I wondered if there was some aspect of the project that contributed to the to the high cost, or if, um, if this includes more than construction. It's uh, their preliminary estimate for construction and a 15% contingency, mm -hmm. so 690 plus plus 15%. Um, I haven't reviewed the cost estimate in detail. The biggest item. The biggest item on, on the estimate is their estimate for um, um, the section of sewer, 1,600 <laughs> feet of sewer. Um, yeah, they're, they're saying um, $160 a foot uh, for the section that's zero, 12 feet deep, and greater than 12 feet deep, $240 a foot. Uh, I haven't checked it against recent bid tabs. But mm -hmm. it, might, it might be conservatively high, but. Um, one question, uh, how long would the design be good for? So if you have the design done, when does it generally, like let's say the money just isn't there and just isn't there, how long until you have to redo the design? It's pretty much good until you build it. Oh really? And um, and again, I think you already touched on this, but this is mainly because when Coca-Cola came in, they took up all the capacity and they were unwilling to... Uh, because I remember in a previous meeting that they were unwilling to basically help us to increase our capacity by giving us a little more money to so, something. It was something like that. I remember at a previous meeting. I think what happened was they were looking for a certain capacity, and we told them that we couldn't, we didn't have the entire capacity that they wanted, and that we could only permit a certain amount up up to that pipe flowing full, unless they wanted to contribute to the construction of a new line. And that sort of thing, and I think there was initial an initial discussion about that, and they uh, got back to the city and said, "Well, we can live with the capacity of the existing line. We don't really want to talk about any type of betterment for a new pipe." And that's and that's pretty much where we are. And then just one last thing, I and I believe at one of the meetings also Ned mentioned that there's like a betterment something, not not a tax, but like if you did the work, then you could actually go back to the business and say. And sort of look for money. I mean, I don't know if there was a need to do that because nobody wants to make Coca-Cola unhappy necessarily. But it was some sort of a Ass assessment. Mm -hmm. it, it's typically, it would typically be more if we were extending the pipe, for example, into a, a new area. Mm -hmm. um, it's, there'd be some back and forth thing with the abutters to the pipe and. We'd be asking them to participate, and maybe could be a betterment assessment, oh, so which they could pay off over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe we finance it. We've done that up on was it Marion Street? Uh, you know, there's some, but you, I don't know if we could preemptively go back to them and say, "Hey, we just did something, and, and now you owe us money." Right. Oh, I was just. It, I it, remember he more, mentioned it. I didn't know. It'd be a little more back and forth. Right. Yeah. More. Well, I just remembered it. I was trying to for clarification of purposes. But Thanks. It, 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 would give them the opportunity to consider bringing new product lines in and, and using more capacity. Sure. So, so it, it's not as though they'd be getting nothing out of it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, they may be our first customer for a bigger line. And I wonder if we could go to them now for even a token amount as a part of this um, study, $20,000 or something, just so they to get them bought into the process keep them continually tied into the reality of the need for the sewer capacity. Uh, I, I now have two questions, but the first one is the red line is the new 18-inch sewer, the blue line is the existing force main, which is fine, and the green line is existing, and does that need to be replaced, or is that fine? Um, that line is going to be replaced as part of no, as part of the North Street construction project. And what size is that? Pipe? It might be a 12. So it'll go to an 18. 
Uh, we're taking a look at the hydraulics. There's, two, there's actually two sewer lines in North Street, and we're looking to combine them into one. So okay. it might be an 18. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think the pipe slope on North Street is a lot greater than it is on this cross-country line. So the capacity of the 12 uh, is greater, obviously, if the slope is greater. Right. Um, but that's something that we're looking at. All right, so then the second question that is something that um, when you were talking to it made me think about uh, what kind of incentive do they have to conserve even more? I mean, they're, they're making a product that's the primary input is water. And they're dumping water, I'm sure it has to do with cleaning their equipment or something. So there may not be, I, I don't know, uh, maybe, the thing is they have to buy the water before they dump it. So I'm just wondering if, if there's a way to um, um, incentivize them to do some work at their plant to reduce the amount of waste water they generate and therefore um, mitigate the need for us to do anything with this utility. I believe That's that... a long shot, I know. Um, well, it's a great thought, and I'm, I'm like, that would be classified as a long shot or not a long shot. Well, I, I think as a company, they try to... Um, they try to use water efficiently and wisely yeah. because obviously there's a cost associated with it. Of course. And um, there's a cost I, associated with I, saving it too. I, I, can't, uh, I can't quote any numbers, but we've had conversations with Coke about the percentage of water that ends up in product versus the amount that gets discharged. Yeah. And I know they try to keep that number down um, as much as they can. Oh, I'm sure they do. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the flip side is because we limited their discharge from their pretreatment plant, I think it I think it may have caused a certain amount of heartburn at their facility because they can only discharge a certain amount of water and depending on the product that they're making in a certain day or certain time, their pretreatment process to fit certain equalization tanks and other things and they're, you know, they, they have to run their system knowing that they can't discharge any more than we told them that they could. Yeah. Um, and it, it might make life easier for them if they could discharge a, higher, a greater volume at certain times. Maybe that's worth $10,000 contribution to their study just to help us keep it moving. Well, well I don't, I honor your, your comments, but I would be concerned because I would want to, I know Terry Anderson has left and we don't have a replacement in terms of economic uh, uh, development. development. Thank you. Um, and, but I would, I would be hesitant to ask for a contribution from from Coke on this in the sense that I would like to see how many more jobs will it contribute. Whereas if we expand that and if somebody new would come in that would bring 25 additional jobs but Coke just mm -hmm. expands their capability without uh, expanding the jobs. Um, it you know there there's a toss up there and I think we would want to have input from the economic development coordinator before we would go and ask them for additional money. That would be yeah. another comment. I just want to echo your concern that without a staff person maintaining economic development relationships, this is not the time to be doing ad hoc suggestions that companies throw money in the pot or something. Because if in, in in lieu of Terry being replaced, I mean that conversation would be had with the mayor deciding and obviously it would be a decision he could make. Mm -hmm. um, you know the other issue just in terms of background, um, we're having some difficulties at the plant handling the discharge from Coca-Cola. Um, they built a several million dollar pretreatment plant last year to handle the high strength waste that's coming out of the new product lines and it's not really working very well and we're on the receiving end of that and we've got people at the treatment plant uh, working hard every day over, over time in some cases to deal with you know the high strength material that they're you know, they continue to discharge. So, you know, on, from that level, we gave them a year to build a plant, gave them a lot of flexibility to, uh, to meet some discharge limits, and they haven't been able to meet them. Um, so they're looking for basically another, you know, we gave them some deadlines and milestones this year to make other improvements at the plant, either to build a new process or to improve the process that they built to be able to meet the discharge permit limits that we gave them. So, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's definitely a cost factor for us at the wastewater plant, our costs are increasing because of the waste that they're discharging. And, you know, there's also um, just basic issues with plant management with trying to deal with the discharge. So it's, you know, having some level of discussion about contributions of uh, uh, money for services provided or something, it's, you know, it's, it's something that I, 
you know, I, I certainly feel <coughs> would not be unreasonable. Um, one of the issues that um, that's come up the last two or three months is the, uh, the discharge of uh, total suspended solids coming from the coke plant is higher than they had anticipated and, and a lot higher than we, we thought it was going to be. And those total suspended solids, when they get, get discharged to the plant, they end up in a higher sludge production um, for us at the wastewater plant. So we have to run our sludge dewatering equipment more. We have more uh, materials to dispose of, which costs us money. We have um, staff operators that have to run the dewatering system more. Uh, sometimes in overtime or weekend or, or other hours, and it's mainly because of this, um, you know, these, these actions to, that are occurring because of the coke discharge. So, um, you know, it's a it's a challenge I think for them. It's a challenge for us. Um, this capacity in the sewer line, you know, obviously is you know it's a challenge for the city to try to figure out what the the best way is to move forward. But um, you know, there's always a little bit more in the background that, that you could be aware of. I guess. But that's, that's one thing that we're struggling with. Is this something we need to put on the agenda for the future to talk about? To have, or do you feel like that there's some progress being made on it? Um, I think it's going to be on the agenda for the next board meeting. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. We've been. We, we, oh, uh, okay. But I turned it off. Sorry. The board had approved a, a contract with SCA um, to review the BOD surcharge. We have a BOD surcharge um, in the in our program now, where co if Coke or someone else discharges a high BOD waste, that costs us more money to process. So we have a we have an additional fee that we charge for that. So we, we asked SCA to, to check that number, which hasn't been updated in like 15 years or something, to, mm -hmm. to make sure it's 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 adequate. And uh, we also asked them to do a uh, a calculation on what uh, what increased costs we're seeing because of the higher TSS, the total suspended solids that we're seeing. The last couple of months. So what we what we want to do, and we're allowed to do under the sewer ordinance, is to also charge us a surcharge for elevated TSS when we get it. So we wanted to talk to the board about that at the next meeting, with what the rates would be and what they would what would recover from that. Hi, right, Jim. No, I was just going to mention the surcharge is being worked on it uh, okay. as we talk, uh, so that uh, you know we'll be able to go back and assess that fee. Uh, we uh, certainly uh, charged uh, Coca-Cola over the years uh, a fairly significant surcharge fee, and uh, we find that with the uh, total suspended solids now, that end of the fee wasn't where we were really uh, prepared to assess the money, and so we're working on both ends of that. Uh, and, and I think uh, certainly uh, we'll come out with a better fee, and more up to date. So where's that getting more? I mean, who is it? Staff? Who's? Uh, staff calculates it, uh, but uh, staff isn't going to rework it. Um, I'm trying to think of who was the original uh, company that did the sure charge fee. Uh, so it's going to be a consultant. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. If, when you were talking, it, was, it sounded like it might have been internal staff. No, no, it's yeah. not. Well, it's a pretty wild, wide ranging discussion for a simple five minute. <laughs> it's very wide I fully range. support the open exchange of ideas and the extended discussion. <laughs> this is the new mic. <laughs> Well, all right, so, so circling back now, we have this contract for Kleinfelder SEA to design the uh, replacement or the upgraded sewer pipe. Uh, everyone ready to? So all in favor of approving the contract? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, now, I really had meant to call everybody and talk to them. You have 10 minutes to run campaigns. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I know, for example, David has been having a lot of fun over the tree committee. I, I... You want me to share? <laughs> the trees? The fun. <laughs> well, does anyone, MJ had said maybe just leave everything the way it is, but does anyone, is anyone interested in being on a new committee or? Always wanted to be on such and such a committee. Do we know what we have for committees? 
Well, we've got the joint committee with the city council, and that's Mike, MJ, and myself. We've got the solid waste education Reuse. issues committee, which is MJ and Rowe. David's on the tree committee. Uh, Gary's on the traffic committee. Transportation. Transportation. Yes. The commission. Right. Let's just get that. He is a commissioner. Yes. Oh. Um, Jim, I think, is, Jim, we won't be putting you on anything. He's a nerd. Uh, I, I, I would think that uh, uh, you would probably be very He's a floater. You guys have done some huge heavy lifting this past year, which I really appreciate um, for for um, reading contracts and proposals. So I, that's no, no, no I, I'm just uh, uh, stating that uh, that your new member, you probably want to put on some committees. Right. So I would uh, wait for two months. To Private leave, ways. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> We don't want all the good ones to be gone. <laughs> leave, it, leave it as it is right now, and then okay. let's find the interest of a new member. Okay. And then, and then Terry can call everybody. Let's yeah. give him, the, him or her the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tree committee was nice. All right, so. Um, you enjoyed it? I make a motion yeah, that we'll carry over appointments until such time as a new member is appointed. Okay, this is for now this this is for the committees. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a second for that? Sure, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor of leaving everything status quo for the time being? Aye. 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 Great. And then, uh, Ro, are you, a any thoughts on the chair, vice chair? When I suggested it, my thought was to confirm the two current position holders for another year. If they would accept I'm that. Fine. Yeah, okay, I'm fine. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we don't well thanks. Change, do we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, at the um, Joint Committee on Monday, there's a great discussion about flood control, and there's some news also. So the news is that we received in the mail recently these two reports, which were um, very thorough inspection reports of the city's flood control system. We've got one on flood control system on the Mill River and one on the Connecticut River. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers hired um, Watermark and GZA consultants to do sort of a stem to stern uh, review of, of the city's flood control system. Um, it resulted in a lot of um, identified deficiencies and the, the need for um, both maintenance type of work and also some engineering type evaluations for each each system. Um, the uh, the reports were transmitted uh, with cover letters, which were I think included in the board's package. I believe. Uh, I think so. I, I got it. Yeah. Oh, did I get an email? A week or so ago. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So the. Um, the cover letters uh, included stipulations um, for certain things to be done uh, in accordance with the schedule that the Corps has, has established. Um, when we maintain the flood control system in accordance with their requirements, we maintain our eligibility to get um, grants or flood mitigation money should there ever be uh, an event that uh, requires us to try to get flood mitigation money. Um, so there's a lot at stake if we don't uh, take care of what needs to be take, taken care of here. Um, the source of funding, I think, to, to take care of this work is there is really no source of funding. Um, for anything related to flood control, it's a general fund expense at the moment um, that we need to go to capital improvements. Um, these inspections were done um, last year. Um, actually, in this fall, we had received another set of inspection reports from the Corps, which was for an inspection they had done two years prior. It took them two years to get the inspections out to us. Those inspection reports also had um, some deadlines in there that we needed to meet. Um, we started to work, the engineering department here started to work on um, construction cost estimates to figure out what the costs were going to be to take care of the things in the older inspection reports. And 
I'm still in the process of reviewing those numbers, but it's uh, I suffice to say it's it's a lot of money in the hundreds of thousands of dollars um, range to take care of that. And there's even more, a lot more in these more detailed inspection reports about things that need to be done. Um, some of the things that, that um, they're asking in here are engineering analysis. Uh, they're looking for topographic surveys and structural borings, hydraulic analysis, um, seepage analysis on the levees, review of the status of the uh, flood control pump stations. There's really a, a lot of work there. I've, I've asked uh, GZA to give us a ballpark budget estimate just for the engineering task so we have a sense of what those are going to be moving forward. Um, so we had a we had a discussion about these items with the Joint Committee earlier and um, it's just a lot of work to do and, and they need to find a funding source to take care of it. I'm just curious, will it hold up other funding that we might be going after by not doing it in a timely manner? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, meaning that there's all these issues there and if and that we need to do it, we have to find money, but then will it hold up other projects that we might want to do um, by not doing these projects? I mean, it's a really wide, arching question. It's really broad, Ro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, these, these projects, as they stand now, would be presented, um, once we figure out what the cost estimates are, um, to the Capital Improvement Committee of the City Council. Mm -hmm. to, to go through general fund appropriation for them. Um, so the very nature of that whole process is, is competitive and every, every year, you know, there are, there are tens of projects that um, different departments have capital needs for and every year there are tons of projects that don't, don't get any money. So, um, yeah, the answer is it's the way the funding is set up right now, it's very, you know, obviously very competitive. And there may not be much of any money available for projects like this. Jim? Uh, this is a uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and it's a federal government job. There's no state monies at all, mm -hmm. and there's no federal money. Mm -hmm. This is the time that we should be looking at our legislators, uh, Rich and Neal and people like that, uh, for government money for these things. But we ought to come up with a package. I mean, we have, what, two million dollars worth of work there anyways. And, and uh, cost that out and say, look, you know, where is this money coming from? Mm -hmm. you, you've given us all this stimulus money for bike paths. Mm -hmm. How about something for flood control? Mm -hmm. You know, something that matters. And, and I think it's important, important enough to shake the ears of some of our politicians. Are there communities up and down the Connecticut River getting these types of letters? Yeah, these were sent out statewide. I think um, some other communities are, are ahead of us in terms of these things because they were um, going through the um, FEMA flood map, flood insurance rate map uh, updating. Mm -hmm. um, so the lo lower Connecticut, um, sort of the Chicopee, Springfield area, um, was, was hit from a slightly, they were hit from a, a different agency about the same thing. Which was um, the, from from it wasn't the Army Corps it was FEMA that said they needed to have their flood control system certified. Um, so when they had to go through that certification process, all these things that we needed to take care of, they needed to take care of to comply with the FEMA requirements. In this particular case, um, FEMA hasn't made it to Hampshire County yet to update their flood insurance rate maps. We were expecting that they would be, but um, because of funding limitations that they have, they have no schedule to come up into Hampshire and Franklin County and update the flood insurance rate maps. In the meantime, the core, because they've been ramping up countrywide to make sure that everyone's taking care of the flood control systems, are coming out with these detailed inspection reports and giving communities directives to take care of their, their flood control systems. So it's something that I think that's happening across the country. Um, and more locally, it's been, you know, Eastern Mass, um, Hamden County, some of these other areas um, were asked to do similar work by FEMA um, and very similar to what the Corps is asking us to do. 
at the um, City Council Board of Public Works committee meeting um, last week. There was a discussion about um, possibly using the stormwater utility enterprise fund to fund this work. And there seemed to be some support from the city councilors in doing that. Um, so and I know that will this part of the recommendation is going to come out of the current stormwater project, but that's another possibility as opposed to the general fund. We don't we don't have a stormwater <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, no, but that's what you're allocating. It's a part of that process. Part of the, they're doing some research on that. We have some public presentation on that. Absolutely. Possibility for utilities? We have, a contract, yeah, we, we have a contract with CEM, um, and they're in the, the process of finishing up a report um, that, was, that was intended to outline the process um, where we could start a new, the, the city could consider starting a new utility for stormwater and flood control related matters including some budgeting and how, how the utility would work, how, um, you know, how revenues would be generated and how projects would be identified, um, ordinances that would be required, that sort of thing. Um, so that's, it's the, the timing for that is fortuitous because it's really needed. Do we know that that, type, that part of the contract is going to be available or when they're going to be doing that? Isn't there a certain type? seem to recall some public presentation or discussion about it. Um, the report, I think, will be done with probably within the month. And then once we have the report, uh, the board can take a look at it. We can decide. We, the CDM has a task in their contract to do some public presentations, whether it's to the board or how we want to do it. So no action required? Nope. Update. Can I ask one more question sure. about this? It looks like all the work was done before um, oh, Irene. 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 Are there any changes or any modifications that are coming out as a result of Irene or everything held as it should have during Irene? Yeah, uh, we were in good shape. Yeah, there's a lot of work that's necessary. I think, um, you know, the comments that we've heard from the Corps and from their consultants is that you know, the city has really done a good job at, at maintaining our flood control systems compared to a, a lot of other communities when Proposition 2 and a half came through. A lot of towns are like, you know, people are laid off. Flood control was like the last thing that anybody was paying attention to. Um, we do maintain, you know, our, our facilities to make sure that they're functional. But suffice to say, you know, they were built in 1940, and there's, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And also, they gave us the, the different letters gave us two different deadlines. One is in January 2013, and the other one is January 2014. Is that going to cause any problems for us? Um, it's caused a big question in my mind as to what the real date is. So mm -hmm. we've got to call into the court to clarify um, what the deadlines are, because in the body of the report itself, um, it says that the community will be given two years from the date of the document, the date that we receive the document, to take care of um, the work that needs to be done. But they only give us the, the dates fluctuate in the letters, mm -hmm. so it's creating a little confusion about the deadlines. I, I really think January 2013 is almost impossible. Yeah, because I, I, I was since, surprised since we have to establish funding <laughs> first, and that could take a <laughs> year. Government can't write a letter and get it signed in a year. Well, it took them a year. That's to right. It took them how long it took them to do their four-page letter. <laughs> <laughs> it took them two years to put that report out. All right. Um, can't decide where to put this in, but someone asked earlier about um, the department sets some capital, a, makes a, creates a capital plan for a year. What roads to a, a resurface, right. how we're going to spend our money. And someone asked earlier about whether we could maybe at a future meeting get an update on where we stand as far as the goals we set in, back in the spring of last year for the year that we're coming to the end of? And when can we begin having a, a look at what the department hopes to accomplish in the coming year? Uh, in your conversation on flood control, I can tell you that uh, for the last seven, eight, ten years, We've had 
in the capital plan replacement of the engines at uh, the flood control station, and they haven't been funded. <coughs> and, uh, that's something now with the way the intensity of storms has, ch has changed in the area that's becoming a very crucial matter. And, and I think uh, it uh, really deserves the board's attention uh, from here on in uh, as to we, we cannot lay back for another six or eight years on those things. I think we have to becomes riskier be and riskier. very prudent and get in there and start replacement. And, uh, so does that does my question make sense? It does. You're talking about department wide, right? All the all the divisions, or yeah. just yeah. You know, we want to implement X and X Y G I S system. We're hoping to do this. Just you know, big back of the envelope kind of stuff. Sure. Big goals. Yeah. Uh, how did we? How have how have things gone this year with the goals we set last year? And um, I know you must be thinking about it as we go into the budget cycle for this coming year. Worth having the board involved with that discussion. Great. Or at least in pool. Yeah. Well, that's kind of policy. Yeah. 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 There's a policy dimension to that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and then we have the solid waste planning update. Item six. Business six. Oh, oh. Okay. Claims committee. Your calendar's out. Oh, there's a committee. Another yeah, one the claims committee. There's another committee. Some of us work really hard on that. Uh, so our next meeting is like the 14th. Mm -hmm. That's true. Wednesday, February. That's right. Once in a lifetime, right? Starting to reap the benefits of it. <laughs> Three weeks till the next meeting. So, oh, BJ, what do you think? How long should we? <laughs> uh, well, we want to tentatively schedule it before that meeting. The fourteenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five, three. Do you know what the anything about the claim? Um, no, I'm not too familiar with it. I was here when the uh, gentleman came in, but he mainly spoke to BJ. Okay. Come like 10 after 5? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. West Center Street, where? Yeah. West Center Street. Forest. Is that rude? What is that? Bethesda Street Campus. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. That's not South Maple? No. <laughs> What's the nature of this? No. <coughs> that's, Nobody knows. That's uh, Maple Street that goes by the front of it. West Center runs alongside oh, of the old Addis building okay. out to Park Street. Oh, okay. Loretta Goodja lives on that street. Yeah. Yeah. Does she still live on it? Well, I think so. I think yeah. she's moving. Did they move? I, I know she's, I know they are. I don't know if they've oh. officially moved yet. Okay. Oh, so what's on the solid waste next? Uh, yes, so now solid waste planning update. How much we did some um, work through our uh, dream, dream proposal. And we're waiting, we understand that the uh, mayor was waiting to appoint a new attorney, so we were waiting on the word from MassDOT, the MassDOT side, to see what was up. Uh, so on the mayor's comment, on the meeting with Ned and the mayor, yeah. up on the MassDOT side. Right. So the mayor was holding off until Seawald was confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. He is. Okay. Holding off on looking at the issue, decision, whether or not addressing the issue, but just looking at it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One other thing on the solid waste. We had a we had another meeting with the. Uh, we need to come up with another subcommittee name for the other solid waste committee meeting we had um, about um, 
long-term planning. A little long-term planning, right? What we'll, we'll 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 the, the, the medium-term we'll planning. Medium but the landfill is closed committee. <laughs> landfill planning. So we had a meeting on Valentine's Day with, uh, with, with Dave, Mike, and, uh, and MJ and staff uh, to talk about what we're going to do when the landfill closes in terms of uh, services to be offered at the transfer stations, what needs to be done, and what we're going to be doing in terms of leaving yard waste composting and um, a number of other uh, things that we're going to look at in terms of waste hauling and, and various costs and updating uh, numbers that we had put together originally for the task force. So um, staff has a number of things that uh, that we need to take care of, and then that subcommittee will be meeting again um, to kind of advance the discussion on on that. So. I felt it was a great meeting. We covered quite a bit. Very successful meeting. The board members left nothing to do. Staff had like six or eight items. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. Um, all right. Gary, is there anything that you hope we would talk about? Or would you well, like I hope talk about? someday it would be fun to talk about what we do with our uh, wastewater treatment plant. Hey, and whether or not that email I sent you has any. I got that email, and when I got it, I was like, it would be awesome if I had an answer when I came to this meeting. Um, well, I don't. I didn't expect question. you to have an answer, but I but, but I don't. It looked like a, an interesting, um, not the, only the, pro, the, the process, but also the delivery mechanism that it would be a third party that would really have all the risk. That, uh, and cost, etc. I did take a quick look at the, uh, at the link that you sent, Gary, and I, I think it's um, it's analogous, I think, to what MWRA does with their sludge in terms of pelletizing it for reuse. Um, the third party company comes in and, and takes care of it all and dries it and makes fancy pellets out of it and then ships it down to the orange groves in Florida on rail or something to use yeah. it. But what, what, what intrigued me was that there was a, an implication that it would also, could also be used as a biofuel, and so. Um, Maybe the processing would be minimized and you would dispose of it on site. So the only you're shipping off site is ash and you get electricity out of it. That's kind of what I was imagining. Not to necessarily run the plant, but to sell as green energy. Right. I don't know. I know we're, I just learned we're shipping, not to Rhode Island, but some other place. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the timing is now's the time we want to look at these things. Where is it going? It's going up to Vermont. To a, nice to a landfill in Vermont. But, yeah, everything you know, all the disposal sites involve a long haul, so it's yeah. you know it's a sick, it's a I forget what our what our budget is every year for that. It's you know, two at it's two or three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, or something. Thousand. I mean, it's a yeah. big big cost. Mm. Mm. Um, so coming up with a way to creatively deal with it. Yeah, Ideally, so, so, so. I mean, doing generating some. Some use right there at the plant, so that there is no. Well, you I mean it? I don't know what. I, I don't know the numbers, so that's why I just thought it would be worth thinking about. It's just a process to take the cake and extract even more water out of it and refine it, mm -hmm. and primarily well, using fertilizer. But this there is this uh, way of making it a biofuel, and the, the delivery mechanism is a third-party contractor. Uh, not only to construct the thing, but then to operate it. Mm -hmm. So but it just seemed like it might make some sense, but the question would be, is there green wrecks involved? <coughs> um, what is our tonnage, and you know, is it economically feasible for, for a third party to invest in a facility uh, for our size facility? And then uh, how much power is it generating enough to, to run the plant? Or is it the equivalent of running the plant? I have no idea. It's just. Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because the state, you know, there's some grant money for combined heat and power projects at wastewater treatment plants. There's a, there's a huge interest in, in that right now because of renewable, renewable energy. If there's money for anything, it's for renewable energy, and yeah. there's a lot of interest in the state level at wastewater treatment plants. But um, it's interesting because I actually met with a couple of representatives today from a company called Harvest Power. Uh -huh. They were in the area um, meeting with someone else, and they popped in at lunchtime for for half an hour and, and I was chatting with them and they, they have a similar concept to what you're saying where they come in as a, a vendor to design, build and operate a facility on the solid side where all the solids that we generate now we throw in a truck and then we bring it somewhere and we pay somebody a lot of money to take it. And they were saying that what they could do 
their deal wasn't dry, their deal wasn't pelletizing and generating energy, it was using anaerobic digestion mm -hmm. to, to take the gas and then generate power with it. Um, some power which they could resell to us at, at a low rate to help run the plant, and then a, any balance of power could be um, sold to the grid. But it, it's a similar, similar concept, different technology. Um, and they were, you know, they were interested in learning more about, you know, what our plant, what the e economics might be. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Do like. Do we have a use for thermal energy at the plant? Well, I mean, like yeah. base load. Of course we do. Yeah. Uh, the the old story is uh, uh, volume. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're big enough, you can do it. And everybody knows about Milwaukee and Mill Organite and how it was produced there. But they say that that when Milwaukee did it, even uh, they employed hundreds of people. And when they got it all broke down, they, they broke even. But they were employing 100 people. Mm -hmm. Well, they still so, are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But the volume that we produce is questionable. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah, uh, the figures don't work for us. Yeah, kind of yeah. And, and uh, I'm sure Mike, Mike has yeah. run up against that many, many times. Do you have a do of any on this? I mean, what are they kind of? Yeah, okay. But the, the sludge drying projects that my company was involved in were very large scale and very energy and mechanically intensive and um, just don't scale down to, that technology doesn't scale down. Maybe somebody has a different technology that scales down. Yeah. The one that I'm familiar with works in Boston and New York and a few other places and that's about it. Yeah. Anaerobic digestion taking a lot more interest lately. I mean, we all, we used to do it and we all left it because of the operational problems and the odor problems and, and, uh, but that is a, that, that's a process that can become more attractive in smaller, smaller facilities, but I still don't know where we fall in that, in that range. Well, we ran digesters here originally and because of the change in the sewage daily. You never knew what what you were putting into the digester. So you always had a problem with fluctuation in gas, quality of gas, and so on. Uh, I don't know. It, it, um, we have a better handle now on what comes down the sewer line. Uh, our industries are all being looked at and uh, we have a pretreatment program here where we go out into our industries, it may be feasible to take a look at uh, the quality of our sludge now and uh, see if that we're going to be uh, um, profitable for use uh, in anaerobic digestion. But anaerobic digestion is a tricky process because of the change in what comes down that sewer line daily. You know, it's interesting. The, the economics of these things um, are interesting, and they were the, the folks from Harvest Power today were saying that um, you know their their business model is where they would set up an anaerobic digestion facility at a plant, but the the, the economics we pay a certain amount. We just said maybe four hundred thousand dollars a year to truck this stuff away. They would charge us a tip fee to take our solids. So there's sort of a base amount of money that they would have coming in to take that plus the plus the power that they would generate. Um, you know, as, an, as another revenue stream, but they look at the tip fee as being a key driver financially to try to make these things work. Mm -hmm. The other interesting thing about Harvest Power is that they've, they've also been involved in projects that deal with so separate organics, so food, food waste and anaerobic digestion, so not only treatment plant types of solids, but other, other types that can be digested. Yeah, I think the biggest problem once you get rolling with it is odor control, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're a real rough location. But part of the whole, this whole thing is that it came through Daniel Collins. It's a Jen Hoyle mm -hmm. right. sure. So it was the, the whole thing just seemed like an interesting proposition. Well, they, they, they went into a... Uh, it's they went into a slug handling process at Hoyle. Uh, what was the people that ran that composting facility down there. But it was supposed to be an odor free thing and oh boy they had all kinds of trouble with it.
too we live for these discussions. We're good. The good stuff. We're missing dinner. We're getting into it here. Yeah. We could talk about this all night. Oh, yes, we <laughs> could. The future of where we're going to come down to All right, Jimmy, is there anything you wanted to talk about tonight? That, uh, Not no? today. Okay, Mike. <laughs> I thought you were in touch with your more intellectual, uh, thoughtful a lot side. I'm just fine. <laughs> Jim, do we get it all? I'm, I'm trying to drag the meeting out so Terry's not going to set any records here. Right? This first week <laughs> there. You guys, I, I know it. I can see it. I've got two photos. I was uh, excited to, to meet with Dave Sparks for a couple of minutes today. Don't, Don't show it. Just describe them to us. <laughs> We had a water main break in Kensington Ave on Monday. And oh, took, boy. It took the crews about six hours, I think, to, to fix this. But they've put a section of the pipe out, and I'll, I'll pass this around. It just shows this was a cast iron main that was put in probably the late 1890s. And you can see the inside of the pipe with its percolation in there. And then there's another one I'll pass around this, this way, which was a sample of pipe from North Street that was installed in 1897. And again, that just shows the inside and the tuberculation that, that's happening there. And um, that's probably pretty typical of a lot of the old pipe that we have. So this is drinking water. This is taking my appetite. It is. It's drinking water. Yeah. All that's just been gassed and rinsed thoroughly. Yeah. It's chlorinated water. For us. So one of the... It's real hard. It's not gooey. No. Oh, it's, it's not, not gooey. gooey. No. No. Well, I understand. Yeah. Okay. It's also sort of pretty. I like to call hard that out. Yeah. Nice color. So one of the things that we're going to start doing when we have water main breaks on these old lines is to take a sample of the pipe and have them brought to a, a metal lab and have them crushed so that we can figure out what the strength of the, of the pipe is for the purposes of determining whether um, if you clean, you can clean and line these old pipes. Yeah. And if, if the, the, the strength of the wall of the pipe is high enough, you can clean and line them and, and keep them in place. So you, they've, you essentially get all the tuberculation out of there and line it with a cement line. Cheaper than relaying. Cheap, I cheaper than we've done cheaper than relaying. We've done it on the sewer side. I don't think we've done any uh, recently or ever on the water side. Um, but part of the ability, you, you need to know whether these pipes are retaining the strength. But the, you know, the old ones in the late 1800s are really great pipe. Yeah. Hmm. But if these growths are so hard that if you knock them off, it cracks the pipe. Right? That's the issue? You grind them off. Yeah, they grind them off. You grind them off. Yeah. Isolate the pipe and collect all the right. That's all I have. That's very cool. Yeah, that's all these fire flows, too. Oh, yeah. MJ? I'm good. Good. See? All set. I was bending, I was just a quick, quick thing. I, just, I was bending Jim's poor ear the other day. Um, you may remember a couple of years ago or a year ago, I was complaining that this guy came in and opened up two slots in our pavement up the street from my house to connect to the water and sewer. And within 10 minutes, his patch had dropped half an inch below the pavement. And it's just getting worse. And, and one the gas company did a few years ago now, like 50 feet along one of the streets, it has not only dropped, but there are potholes in the patch. So they're not extending into the pavement, but the patch is just crumbling. And we let people do this for 250 bucks. I think that's what we charge them. And this, there's a standard they have to meet. But so we don't check. We don't years. inspect. We don't. Five years. Yeah. But we don't. Uh, there's no inspection. There's no. Yeah. And we better hope the DPW truck doesn't drive on it. Yeah, because we know what can happen. Well, I, I still think we should hold their feet to the fire to do a slightly better job. Yeah, but oh, one I of agree. us would have to do it. So, Terry, you know of, of a specific tra trench that has failed? Yes. That's related to a specific trench permit that was pulled less than five years ago. So why can't we... Well, the, the one the one that's got potholes, I, I don't know, it's five-ish years. Yeah, maybe it's well, five years, five months. we know that it's a five-year five piece, so... I should, I should... Why don't we take action on drop that? Drop a dime one? and... No, I don't... Uh, you know, sometimes I think that we, in our efforts to want to take a comprehensive approach to things, sometimes stall ourselves. When we have, we might very well have the authority to do something about that specific instance. 
So I should get back to Jim with the location of said trench. trench. Uh, we do chase down those things. I mean, uh, those those complaints come into uh, each department or come in here to the office, and they'll look to see if it's a sewer or water or gas or whatever, mm -hmm. and they contact the people that uh, have done the, the work. And uh, I know the sewer department uh, and the water department follow those things up. And uh, they'll actually go after the contractors if it's a bad job. They'll go right after them. And, and uh, same with our streets for them. Okay. So. I'll take pictures. I'll take it. Yeah. I'm also going to throw out the fact I'm going to put that on the agenda for the next meeting to make sure you Okay. Right. <laughs> You're talking about just one place. It's not like we have to start with the whole place. We just find one place that this happens and, and go out and then follow up on it That's and right. that makes him more careful with other places. So that you know in my mind it's like, well if we're gonna do it in one place we have to do it in all places. No. So we do it. We do it now. Mm -hmm. and, and they do chase it down. Yeah. Okay. Well I'll get the information. But the thing is, if you see it, call it in. If you see it, do something. Uh, okay. All right. So damn. I want to give Jim a job. How long have you been here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> All right, I will. Now, it's, it, it's tough to remember to call those things in, too. Yeah, if your tires. Because I'm sitting in, and I'm mean, thinking in the back of my mind, I have one on Florence Road as you go over the hill and down towards the lights. Somebody cut right across that road. And that trench was down there. It had to be down there four inches. Ooh. And I never called it in. All right. Well, I'll, so I'll, I'll document my thing, and let's. I'll find out what time it was put in. Okay. I'm excited. Uh, I made a motion to hear. Great. All in favor? Aye.